Hello friends, hope you are all doing fine. In this video tutorial, I'll explain the procedure to create the 3D solid model of this wall mounted lamp using AutoCAD software. We will first create the 3D model using solid modeling commands. Then we will render the model after assigning the realistic finishes. In the process of rendering this model, we will see the procedure to create and assign a material using AutoCAD software. So let's get started. I'll start by creating the top part of the lamp which actually emits light. That is where you keep the bulb. For that, I'll start with a polyline with a dimension of 20 units straight down. Now the limit is not properly set, so you can just zoom it to get a proper limit. Next, I'll draw another polyline a rightward through a distance of 12 units. Now I'll give move command with this mid as the base point. Now you can just shift right click and choose nearest and you pick a point somewhere over here. Okay, I have located this horizontal line here. Next I'll draw a profile in the shape of that top part using a polyline. I'll track this point as well as this point to get a point over here. Now I'll go to right click and choose arc option then right click again and choose a second point to get a point somewhere over here then you can pick another point here then you can pick one more point corresponding to this point here now just right click and go to line mode and you pick a point here this profile can be further refined if you want using grip editing to get a smooth shape I'll bring it somewhere over here and this point can also be slightly brought in to fine tune this shape. Next, I'll give revolve command to revolve this particular profile about the vertical axis. So I'll go to revolve and select the profile to be revolved. Then it'll ask you for the axis. I'll pick a point over here as well as here to define a vertical axis. Now just give an enter when you're asked to give the angle of revolution. Now I don't want those vertical lines and horizontal lines. So what I'll do is I'll erase this object for the time being. Then I'll move these profiles rightward to this point. Then I'll give oops command to get the erased objects back. Now I can erase these profiles. I'll switch over to the Southwest isometric view. So I'll just click over here. Now you can see this object in 3D. Next, I'll rotate this object about the x-axis through an angle of 90 degree to correct the orientation because you can see that this object is presently in the lying down position. Now you have to bring it onto the standing position. So I'll give rotate 3D command. Select the objects. Now the axis is X. So I'll give X. Now the rotation angle is 90 degrees. Next, you have to specify a point on the x-axis. I'll pick a point which is the center of the circle. Rotation angle is 90. Now the orientation is corrected. Next, we have to create a base for this top of the lamp. For that, I'll start with a circle. So I'll go to circle and I'll choose center radius option. And I'll choose this point as a center point And I'll give a radius of 7 units. Next, I'll extrude the circle through a distance of 1.6 units. I'll give minus 1.6 because it has to be taken in the negative as a direction. Now let's shade it and take a look. But this is how it will appear. Next, I'll generate a front elevation. So I'll go to a front. Next, I'll mirror this extruded circle about a 45 degree axis. The first endpoint of that axis starts at a distance of 10 units from this center point straight down. Let's perform such a mirroring. So I'll go to modify mirror and I'll select this extruded circle. When I'm asked to select the first point on the mirror line, I'll track this point first, then I'll keep the cursor in the downward direction. Then I can type the distance 10. So I'll type 10, enter. Now this point starts at a distance of 10 units from the center. I could define such a point because the extension option is active in the OSNAP menu. So you should make sure that the extension is active when you do this. Next, activate the polar tracking and make sure that the 4590-135 option is checked. Then you just keep the cursor at 45 degree angle and you can see that the cursor snaps at that point. 
Okay, so by activating the polar tracking, you can make the cursor snap at regular angular increments. Now you just pick the second point on the mirror line over here. Now when you're asked to select whether you want to erase a source object, just give an enter. And what you've got just now is a mirror image of this extruded circle at an angle of 45 degrees. Now using the move command, I'll move this mirror image through a distance of 3 units rightward. Next, using another polyline, I'm going to connect this center with the center using an arc. So go to arc option and right click and choose second point. And you can choose a point somewhere over here as a second point and you can pick the end point over here. And the end point is the center. Now just click to activate the grips here and you can refine the shape of this arc. I would like to get such an arc. Next I'll create a circle with the center at a random location and a radius of one units. Now I'll go to the sweep command and I'll select the circle and just give enter and this is the path along which the circle is to be swept. Hence we have made a connecting element between these two objects. Now you may feel a bit of segmentation over here and that can be corrected using a variable called face address. So give face address and give the value 10. Now you will get maximum smoothness on the curvular surfaces of a solid object. You can make out a small gap over here as well as here and that can be corrected by moving the circle in the leftward as well as in the upward direction. So I'll give move command and I'll select the circle. This is a base point and I'll move the extruded circle through a distance of 0.5. Now that gap will disappear because of the overlap. Next again one more move. Select these two objects and this is the base point and keep the cursor in the upward direction and I'll type a distance of 0.5. Now you can feel that overlap over here. Next I'll give a union command to make all these objects into a single unit. Now you can see that these three objects will get merged as a single unit. Next we will go to the southwest isometric view and we'll switch over to the shaded representation. Next we have to introduce fillets at the sharp corners of the curvular edges. So I'll go to fillet command and I'll give a radius of 1 units and this is the first edge to be filleted. Now it'll ask you for radius again. I don't want to change it. So just give an enter. This is the second edge and this is the third edge. In fact, you don't have to fill it here because this face merges with the wall surface. Give an enter. Now we have got the fillets and we have completed the 3D model of the lamp. Next we will create a face to indicate the surface of the wall. For that I'll create a rectangle on this plane and this lamp will actually get fixed on that particular wall face. So I'll align the UCS with the left face first. So I'll go to visualize tab and align the UCS with the left face because this face is parallel to the left face. Next I'll construct a rectangle on this face. So I'll click on a rectangle tool and I'll start the first corner of the rectangle from this center. Then I'll drag and specify some arbitrary dimensions for the rectangle and click to define the opposite corner point. Next I'll create a region to generate a surface within this boundary. So I give region and selected it. Now I'll switch over to the left side elevation and adjust the position of this rectangle properly. So I'll go to move tool. This is the base point. When you're asked to specify the second point, you can pick a point somewhere over here after turning off the O snap. You can generate a southwest isometric view. Okay, this is the surface of the wall. Next, we will assign various materials to various objects to perform rendering and hence we can conduct a more convincing presentation of this model. Now I'll introduce you to the concept of creating and assigning materials in AutoCAD. It is done using an interface called Materials Browser and it is an interface in AutoCAD using which you can create, a save, assign and edit materials. This interface is available in the Visualize tab and you can just click on the material browser. To use materials in AutoCAD we have two options. Uh, the first option is that you can access and assign materials that comes along with the Autodesk material library and when you click on this arrow you can open and expand that library and you can access any desired material. For example I want a stone uh, finish and I want a granite finish. You can see a number of different types of granite stones available. 
And when you just click on this arrow over here, you, you have different options to view this material. And the thumbnail sizes can also be determined by you. If I want, I can go for say 64 by 64 larger thumbnails to view it clearly. And the second option is that you can create a material of your own. So in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a material. The default material is called a global material. If you want to create a material, you have to just right click over here. Then you just click on duplicate. The software names the new material as global within brackets one, within brackets two, etc. Now I'm going to call it as lamp bulb. Okay. And you can double click to get a materials editor. Here you will see the name which is given to the new material. And the basic information is the color information. And uh, that color can be specified from here. If you select color by object, whatever color given to the object will be selected. But here I want a new color. So just click on color and you can just click on the color swatch here and you can select any desired color from here. Suppose if you want this particular color for the bulb, you can choose that. Okay. And next you can assign a number of properties like reflectivity, transparency, etc. And now I'm going to give self illumination. Self illumination is a property of a material to emit light. And if you want, you can specify self illumination color. Then you can specify parameters such as the luminance. The luminance I'm going to uh, select a lamp shade interior. These are all various presets. Depending upon the requirement, you can select any desired preset. I would like to go for this one. Then color temperature means the different shades of color of that lamp you can choose. I'm going to select incandescent bulb. Okay. So this is the material which I have created. Now you can just select the object onto which you want to assign this material. Then you just right click on the material and just click on assign to selection. Lamp bulb material is applied to, to the corresponding object. Next I'll create and assign the material for the bottom part of the lamp. So I'll right click at global and click on duplicate and I'll rename this material as lamp shade. Then I'll double click on this. Then here I'll assign a particular color for the shade. Let it be a lighter shade like this. I'll assign a reflectivity for this material. That's all. I don't want to give any other parameter. Next, I'll select this object. Then a right click and assign to selection. Next, I'll create just a plain color for the wall. So I'll repeat the same steps. So right click here at the global duplicate and I'll call it as walls. Then double click here. Then you can assign just a plain color for the wall. So color and I'll give a slightly darker shade for the wall. This is it. Then select the wall, then right click assign to selection. Now I'll close the materials editor and the material browser. Then let's perform a rendering here. But before you render, you should make sure that uh, the shadow is selected at full shadows. Then you have to go specify a render size. A render size is nothing but the size of the render window. Here it is specified in pixels. Presently the 1280 by 720 pixel is checked that is the HD resolution. You can go to any desired sizes based on the requirement. Suppose if you want to go for large size prints like A3 and all that, then you have to go for higher pixel sizes. So it will obviously take more time to render. Then you should also specify the render quality which starts from low, then medium, high, then coffee break, etc. So I'll go for high quality rendering. Then you click on the render size button to perform rendering. Now it will take some time to render because I've specified high quality as the required quality. Now the performance of the machine actually counts. If you have a Core i7 computer with 16 GB RAM, then you will get the results pretty fast. Otherwise you have to wait for some time to get the results. So this is the rendered output. Now you can save this file in any standard image file formats by clicking on the save icon. We have PNG, JPEG, TIFF, TGA and BMP, which are the commonly used formats. I'll save it in JPEG format and I'll give the file name as LAMP. And you can also choose the quality. Using the slider, you can control that. If you go for the best quality, then it will take relatively larger file size. So I'll just give OK. Hope you like this tutorial of 3D modeling and rendering of a wall mounted lamp using AutoCAD software. Thanks for your valuable time. Please hit the like button of this video if you really liked it. And subscribe to my channel SabirCAD for more interesting videos related with 2D drafting and 3D visualization. Until I catch you in the next video, bye bye and take care and peace be upon you all.